next time you see us, we're gonna be in Bryce Canyon. to show you everything that you can do in Bryce Canyon that's worth doing in one day trip. Here are some good tips when you come or plan to come to Bryce Canyon. First, make sure you bring plenty of water. Make sure you drink a bunch of water the day before as well as the day of your trip. The altitude within the park reaches over 9,000 feet at some points, so you're going to wanna make sure that you are hydrated. Make sure that you carb up. It's a good excuse to eat some pizza or some sandwiches or just bread in general. <laughs> make sure that you pack a nutritious lunch as well as plenty of snacks for your trip. The bottom line is that carbs will make you feel full, fueled, and breathe easier, literally. If you do struggle with asthma or any other altitude sickness symptoms, you can always go to a lower altitude. You can also shop for oxygen supplies at gas stations or gift shops and things like that. They usually have oxygen canisters that you can purchase. You can pay this price for a day pass to enter the park, or you can just buy your annual national park pass and use that. Bryce Canyon is the home to the world's largest collection of hoodoos. Hoodoos are irregularly eroded rock spires that are carved out over time by a mixture of frost wedging style erosion and rainfall, sculpting them out into these bulbous shapes. If you're an early bird, we recommend starting off in the park at Sunrise Point. There's a rim trail with several viewpoints. Sunrise Point can get busier later in the morning and early afternoon, but if you're bums like us and you wanna sleep in, or you're only passing by for a few hours, we would recommend doing what we did, the scenic drive. Start by driving all the way to the end first and then making your way back towards the park entrance. The road from the park entrance to Rainbow Point is about 18 miles and the drive is anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. You'll end up at Rainbow and Uvimpa Point and there are a few spots to stop and stretch your legs along the way. So this is Uvimpa Point and it's right beside Rainbow Point, which is the highest point in the park elevation wise at just over 9,000 feet. Got a little picnic area if you did want to snowshoe out there. <laughs> or in the summer, I'm sure it's better. So the types of trees in this environment that you'll find are ponderosa pines, fir, spruce trees. You'll also find limber pine and Rocky Mountain juniper. Lots of nice shrubbery at a surprisingly high altitude. From owls to eagles, lizards to jackrabbits, and prairie dogs to coyotes, there is tons of wildlife here, uh, including larger wildlife like mountain lions and elk. Make sure you wear sunscreen, bring plenty of water, and wear layers, because it's gonna be windy. If you're trying to get a good shot on your phone for video or photo, make sure that you turn your phone to airplane mode so that you can save battery and that your phone won't die while you're in a cool area trying to get some footage. Service is pretty limited and can be really spotty in the park. This can drain your phone's battery very quickly if it spends all of its remaining energy searching for service. Yes, I do have an iPhone S5 and I don't care. because the entire park is viewable on your left as you enter the park, it'll be easier for you to stop at the scenic pullouts when you return from the end to the entrance. Everything that is worth seeing is able to be seen as you pull off to the right of the road. This conveniently gives you the best access for on and off stops.
when you start your trek back to the entrance. The park recommends that you can stop at Agua Canyon or Natural Bridge. Drone footage is illegal in national parks and areas with uh, wildlife. fragile wildlife ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So definitely be respectful. Don't fly your drone where you're not supposed to. National forests are good to go though. Almost, almost all national forests are safe drone space, but not the national parks. It even says it. It says it on the visitor's guide. It will tell you on their websites, nationalparks.gov. Just can't believe we saw someone doing that today. So just had to share that if you didn't know. So we're at Fairview Point, I think. Farview. Farview. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and indeed it is a far view. Also, it's totally worth saying that this entire day trip is more of a scenic drive or scenic viewpoint stop. This is something that you can do with anyone of any ability level. If you have a disabled loved one or friend, this is a great opportunity to park close and you can easily access gorgeous views. There are trails. We were hoping to show you some. A lot of these cool one mile trails are actually closed right now because of so much snow but it's still really beautiful in the winter and definitely worth doing, especially for the off-season accommodation prices. And the snow adds such a beautiful contrast to all of the other colors going on, so it is just so pretty, even if a lot of the trails are seasonal. Yeah. And needless to say, continue to keep our national parks and public spaces clean for everyone to use and for future generations to enjoy. We took a right to go to Para Point instead of Bryce Canyon, and apparently the road is closed. So, do not attempt this one in the winter. Pariah Point is seasonal. Let's back up and go to Bryce Point. Okay. Hopefully that one's viewable. We're about to head over to Bryce Point, which is a really awesome viewpoint to catch some sights of that huge collection of hoodoos that Bryce Canyon has to offer. you came you were so little for me it's just a day now you're all grown up tall as a tree strong as a wolf pup faster than so if you were it that a chance will pass you by Holy moly. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's wild. Another tip about going to sunset point or anywhere that you're going to watch the sunset, you actually want to show up like an hour and a half before the sun is supposed to set because it's not really about watching the sunset from that point. It's about watching all of the colors in the rocks get hit with that golden hour hue. Because by the time we got here, we thought we had a little time left. It was a lovely color, but it wasn't quite as bright as those bright 
golden hour hues are gonna be if they hit everything. And we mentioned this because we just left and we just saw a ton of people just pull up because the sun is actually setting in about 10 minutes, but you can't get here like you're gonna watch a sunset on the horizon. You gotta get here when the sun's still in the sky high enough to hit those rocks because that's what that is all about. So you can actually hike all along this rim all the way to Sunrise Point, right there. You can also hike down in there. Rim Trail is a very easy hike. Looks like it's good in every season. Ironically enough, Sunset Point is actually a lot less busy at sunset, <laughs> which is nice. At least in the winter. At least in the winter. Offers some really nice, like, it is really beautiful, fully unobstructed views. on Bryce Canyon? It's beautiful. Bryce Point is phenomenal. There was like, I was kind of waiting for that moment in a national park where you catch that view that takes your breath away just a little bit. And uh, yeah, that was it for me. Yeah. That, that was my like big wow moment was Bryce Point. I think that was mine too because the hoodoos that were stacked in the very far back looked like chess pieces and I thought that was cool. We also did watch The Queen's Gambit recently, so <laughs> yeah. that was on our brain, I guess. Our brain, like we share one. <laughs> We're never breaking up. <laughs> you can do so much in one day, but you don't have to squeeze everything into one day. You are allowed to save things to look forward to any other time. Yeah, really great views just in the uh, car accessible pull-offs. If you go to Bryce Canyon or really anywhere that's beautiful in nature, or anywhere in general, take some time to take in the views without technology. You might not think this kind of stuff is for you, but it is accessible, it is beautiful, it is easy, it can be challenging. There are options. I think Bryce is a park that I would say is is a very well-rounded park. There's the easiest of easy I've ever seen in a national yeah. park for the views you get, and then there are some really challenging hikes that I've seen in like the Grand Canyon that they only want experts to do. Yeah. So, or that you travel with experts and they just let people go down in there on these, you know? <laughs> so it's really whatever your level of adventure and comfort is, you can find something and there's something for everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this, hit the bell notification and subscribe. We are gonna eat some food and sleep a whole bunch because tomorrow we're going to... Zion!